Being a Kid, oh, read by the author Tracy R. L. O'Flaherty. Chapter 1. Choose Love. Where do I start? Where it began? Where it went wrong? Where it went right? Where do I start to understand what makes people do the things that people do? Where would I begin with a childhood dated back to the late 60s and 70s? Where would I start? I guess the answer is to start. My first experience of looking about, looking around, I was young. I know I was curious. I know nothing made sense in a world where all was to make sense. Have you ever pondered really pondered what childhood and adolescence is all about? Have you ever thought that it could be longer, much longer, in relation to adulthood? But when we are young, we wish to be old, and when we are old, we wish to be young. See, this is where it all starts. Knowing where to start, knowing to start, but start what in the land of confused adults? The 70s, the 60s, the early 80s, I don't know. This was the time that I was brought to Mother Earth, 1966 to be exact, and truly there are no words to describe my everyday, my ordinary childhood, unless you really take a look around and start to put pieces together to find not much fits. I could have done without the school experience. I think most of us could, but truly, that would have left us alone with the adults that we already knew. The adults that we think we know. The adults doing their best to raise children. The adults doing their best to give and to provide all the basics, and then a little more. Where do people learn to be parents? And when do people understand that parenting really isn't anything like what the youth remember? For isn't it true the statement be said, I will not raise my children the way I was raised? And yet, the same recipes handed down, the same traditions, the same personalities, but that would be argued, for no one would admit to having the same personality as their parents, at least one of them. It is only when the child becomes the very mature adult later in life where one can see how one truly does resemble the upbringing and the parenting. So, my first question is, why is there so much upon telling the truth? Please tell the truth. It is always said, please tell the truth, for if you don't, there is punishment. And depending on the home in which one is raised, there could be great punishment. And then, one child can become so good at the lies, it becomes a norm just to make it through the family dinner. Isn't it all fascinating? Truly, so many people can remember childhood, and so many wish to forget. And at the same time, it is a time of innocence, of play and laughter. So back to, don't lie. I could never understand the theme of Santa Claus. I couldn't get my head around the tooth fairy or around the Easter bunny that delivered the chocolate. I just couldn't imagine why these stories are made up. And then the child is to be truthful. Now we go along with it as who doesn't want Santa to arrive? Who doesn't want to receive money from a missing tooth? And who doesn't want to search for great amounts of chocolate? We go along with it because there is a reward of some kind. Don't lie, your nose will grow. I would look around the room at the adults conversing and I knew who was fibbing, who was real, who was fake, who had a very large nose. For you see, I did know. The gifts of mediumship does stem back many lifetimes. So, here I am waiting for the Easter Bunny, 
wondering why someone would pretend there was a rabbit to visit our home with candy that we really weren't allowed to eat much of unless it was a special occasion. So, a large rabbit enters our home, delivers yummy chocolate that has to be shared with siblings, and yet we absolutely overlook it. We never question the stories, we never challenge it, because, yes, it is true, something is given that we want. I know keeping the story alive and well, keeping the traditions of a pretend rabbit delivering chocolate eggs was childhood fun. But don't lie. Don't ever lie. Why wasn't the question asked? Why isn't it a chicken delivering the eggs? Why wouldn't a giant chicken deliver the eggs? But there is something unique about a rabbit giving eggs away, especially if it filled up a basket of good cheer. But don't ever lie. Don't ever lie. I realize that each and every family is different. So many families also very different in rules and regulations. How it is, how it was, and truly, I find it most fascinating how we all have to make it through this thing called childhood. The growth is unbelievable. Think about what you learn in the first 12 months of life. Truly, think about what is learned. When we hit our 40s, we don't pull off any kind of learning like we did for our first 12 months. Is it a good thing we don't remember? I don't know. Is it a good thing to not know the feeling of our first step, the accomplishment, the victory? And when we are adults, a step in anything can truly frighten us. Isn't that fascinating? Perhaps if we could remember our first step, we would remember the courage, the excitement, the determination, the knowing, the wanting, the discovering, and yet it is the norm. What about the first time we held a fork? What about the first time we could say something, anything? These are all huge achievements, all to be in the first while of infancy. We don't look back and praise ourselves. It is true, most likely someone clapped as we achieved our first victory step. But then the step became two, then three, then four, then the words always repeated, stop! Don't you go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I just learned how to walk and you will place me in this playpen so I don't go anywhere? Don't you find that fascinating? A first step in life becoming endless steps and then you can't go anywhere. Not near the stove, not in the other room, not on the road, and I know all for good reason, but nonetheless, the restrictions, endless restrictions. And this is where I begin.